Located near the heart of Jerusalem is a place called the Garden Tomb, what some believe was the Garden of Joseph of Arimathea. Here, some believe Jesus died, was buried, and then rose from the dead. The Garden is a two-acre oasis in the often hectic city of Jerusalem. British Christians bought the Garden 125 years ago and formed the Garden Tomb Association. For years, they've allowed visitors here free of charge. Richard Murian is the director of the Garden Tomb. What we do have here in the garden is a perfect representation of the biblical account at the end of the four Gospels. Everything in those four Gospels matches what we show people here in the garden. Today, nearly a quarter of a million visitors pour into the garden tomb each year. Guide Steve Bridge took CBN News on a tour visitors get when they come to the garden. What we plot out is the basic geography that we have in the Bible. Jesus was crucified outside of the city walls uh, at a place called Golgotha. And in the immediate area to where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden that belonged to a rich man uh, by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. We came first to the place the Bible calls Golgotha, where the book of Matthew says, and when they had come to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, place of a skull. What are some of the main questions that people ask you when they come here? I mean, some of the main questions, uh, certainly from Christian groups, would be around, you know, can we be certain that this mm -hmm. is yeah. the place where Jesus died and where he was raised to life? But the evidence for the garden can be compelling too. The Gospel of John says, at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden. If you have a garden, you need lots of water, especially in the dry Middle East. The garden tomb contains one of the oldest and largest cisterns in Jerusalem. It's 2,000 years old and holds about 200,000 gallons of water. So the tomb that we have here is um, typical of a first century Jewish Rolling Stone tomb. Uh -huh. It's dated as being at least 2,000 years old, mm -hmm. possibly older. In the garden, the Bible also says there was a tomb. It is carved out of the solid rock. It's a man-made tomb, and that's how the Bible describes the tomb in which Jesus' body was laid. This channel that you can see in front of the tomb entrance is where the stone would have sat that would have been rolled across to seal the entrance to the tomb. Mm -hmm. So finally, the, the most important thing about this tomb itself is that it's empty. So why don't we go inside and have a look? Okay. What we're looking at when we look in this direction is through into the burial chamber itself and uh, what you have inside the burial chamber are these two um, areas where a body would be laying, one just down here and one on this side. The tomb itself seems to fit the Bible's description. That Jesus is who he says he is. way that the tomb is empty and we as Christians of all the world faiths serve a living God who has overcome death, who has dealt with the sin in our life and Jesus is the centrality of our Christian faith, is he not? And so here in the garden that's what we want people to take away is the living Lord Jesus. The Easter weekend is the weekend that changed the world and the weekend when Jesus died and was buried and rose again for me and for you. Jesus offered one very specific sign to the religious leaders of his day, a sign that he said would authenticate that he was indeed the Messiah. Actually, that's recorded right here in John chapter 2. In verse 18, some of the Jewish religious leaders confronted Jesus after he had cleansed the temple, and they said to him, what sign do you do? What sign are you going to show, seeing that you've done all these things, that you've cleansed the temple, you've put out the, the money changers? And Jesus answered them, verse 19, 
And he said, destroy this temple, speaking of the temple of his body, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Well, the Jews who heard Jesus, these leaders, said, why, this temple, speaking of the temple, the physical temple there, it's been 46 years in the building. You're going to rear it up in three days? But Jesus Christ, we're told, verse 21, was speaking of the temple of his body. This event takes place after Jesus had been crucified, right after he was buried. Notice in Matthew chapter 27, verse 62. Now, the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together to Pilate. And they said, Sir, we remember that this deceiver said while he was yet alive, After three days, I will rise again. Now, command that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples should come by night and steal him away and say unto the people that he's risen from the dead, so that the last error be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, You have your guard. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. Since the coming Sabbath was especially holy, so the soldiers went and broke the legs of the first man and then of the other man who had been crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, plunged his spear into Jesus' side. And at once, blood and water poured out. The one who saw this happen has spoken of it, so that you may also believe. What he said is true. And he knows that he speaks the truth. This was done to make the scripture come true. Not one of his bones will be broken. And there is another scripture that says, People will look at him whom they pierced. There was a garden in the place where Jesus had been put to death, and in it there was a new tomb where no one had ever been buried. Since it was the day before the Sabbath, and because the tomb was close by, they placed Jesus' body there. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the entrance. Mary stood crying outside the tomb. While she was still crying, she bent over and looked in the tomb. Then she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Woman, why are you crying? Who was it that you were looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said to him, You took him away, sir. Tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. It was late that Sunday evening, and the disciples were gathered together behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Then Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. After saying this, he showed them his hands and his side. Stop your doubting and believe. My Lord and my God. Do you believe? Because you see me. How happy are those who believe without seeing me. In his disciples' presence, Jesus performed many other miracles which are not written down in this book. But these have been written in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God.
the tomb in which the body of the Lord Jesus was placed is empty. Almost 2,000 years have passed since Jesus rose from the dead. And he still lives today as the greatest and most powerful influence in the world. The proud statesmen of the past centuries have come and gone. Rulers, scholars, scientists, philosophers, and theologians have come and gone. But Jesus still lives today. He is the most unique person who has ever lived. His birth was unique. The Bible tells us he was born of the Virgin Mary. His life was unique. His life was characterized by the supernatural. He lived a holy life without sin and performed greater miracles than anyone who ever lived. The Son of God, the Savior of all mankind. This same Jesus Christ is alive today the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.